Hello, I'm Dr. Ross Bremner, the director of the Esophageal Disease Center at St. Joseph's Hospital in Phoenix. I'd like to take a few minutes to discuss gastroesophageal reflux disease, otherwise known as GERD. This is a common problem and the source of such symptoms such as heartburn, chest pain, regurgitation, chronic cough, and even occasionally hoarseness. It is so common that you can now buy a book at your local bookstore called GERD for Dummies, since about 10% of Americans will have heartburn at least a few times a week. But I'll really summarize all you need to know in the next few minutes. GERD is reflux of gastric juice back into the esophagus, or higher to the back of the throat and even into the lungs. This gastric juice, which is most commonly acidic, results in substernal burning discomfort, otherwise known as heartburn. The most common cause of this disease is a weakness of the lower esophageal sphincter. This is a muscular type valve between the esophagus and the stomach. This valve normally prevents gastric juice from entering the esophagus. But in our society, it's typically weak. This may be the result of overeating, or eating frequent fatty meals which distend the sphincter, decrease its tone, and allow acid to damage the lower esophagus. Commonly, there is an associated hiatal hernia, and this is where part of the stomach starts to push up into the chest. This usually results in an even poorer ability of that sphincter to control reflux. Sometimes the hernia can become very large, with most of the stomach herniating into the chest, as you can see on this x-ray. Occasionally, reflux can be so severe that the lining of the esophagus changes. This is a disease process called Barrett's esophagus, and this is a pre-malignant condition. Esophageal cancer, unfortunately, is increasing in incidence more rapidly than any other cancer in this country, largely as a result of GERD and Barrett's esophagus. This makes it even more important to pay attention to this disease. There are a number of ways to treat GERD. The first step is medical management and this includes number one, losing weight, since being overweight contributes significantly to the disease. Taking medications such as H2 blockers like ranitidine or using the more powerful anti-acid medications called PPIs such as Nexium, Prevacid, or Asifex is the next step. There are a number of these medications available and more are appearing on the market all the time. The acid can be controlled by these medicines, but these medicines don't correct the hernia or the valve mechanism, so they don't stop reflux of gastric juice into the esophagus. This gastric juice may still cause damage to the esophagus, and patients may still complain of regurgitation and may have this juice go down into their lungs, a process called aspiration. For patients with severe reflux, those with Barrett's esophagus, those patients that don't want to be dependent on medicines for life, and those with aspiration symptoms, an anti-reflux procedure should be considered. This is an operation designed to fix both the hernia and the valve at the bottom of the esophagus. This procedure is most frequently done laparoscopically, that is, by using minimally invasive surgical techniques. The procedure involves using a portion of the stomach to recreate a valve mechanism as seen in this cartoon. The operation is done under general anesthetic, and most patients go home the day after surgery. The success in controlling reflux is as high as 95%, and most patients will not need any anti-acid medications after the surgery. However, the operation is not for everyone, and you should be evaluated in a specialized center that understands the disease process so that treatment can be personalized to your needs. Here's to a heartburn-free future. If you have any further questions, please call 1-877-602-4111. Thank you.